Shock. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Cool. Um, OK, so uh, I'll give a second class on this uh, fancy or funny uh, Sajdiv Yekitaev model or, or, or models. Um, now, let me very briefly remind you what I uh, said last time, and then I, I'll, I'll ask you what's, if there are any questions about it. So, so the model, it, it, at least in its simplest uh, incarnation, is uh, four fermions. Again, they can be my runners or uh, complex fermions. It, that doesn't matter too much. And uh, there is a matrix element with four indices here, and they, just out of desperation, uh, assume that it's completely random. Namely, uh, it, its uh, average is zero, and then um, second moment is, is given by this scale j. And uh, as I tried to, to argue last time, a good idea is to scale it with a uh, number of fermions uh, to the third power. So number of fermions is, is here. Um, then what, what we showed, uh, that's a pretty simple algebra, that you can uh, encode partition function or any correlation functions of this model in, in, in this uh, type of a field theory. And this field theory will depend on two matrix fields, um, one plays, plays the role of a green function and the second plays the role of a self-energy. And then the capital N number of fermions uh, appears solely in, in, in this place, namely it plays the role of inverse Planck constant, uh, which means that uh, N to infinity limit is, is relatively simple. It, it is a classical limit of this, fi uh, of this uh, field theory which is given by uh, extrema equations for, for our action in terms of two fields. And uh, these equations immediately can be uh, read out uh, to, to look like this, which is a Dyson equation with a particular um, form of the self-energy. So what this system of equation does, it sums up all diagrams like this, and the claim is that in n to infinity limit, that's an exact procedure. Okay. Uh, now these equations are still not completely simple, but but of course much simpler than, than initial theory. So something can be done, and the first thing to to pay attention is that if we bravely put time derivative to zero, uh, then equations become solvable, or almost exactly solvable. And what you find is that the green function behaves like one over time to the power of one half, and corresponding uh, self-energy, it has three green functions, so it, it, it behaves like one over time to the power of three half, which being after Fourier transform lead to self-energy as function of epsilon being square root of epsilon, which is for sufficiently small epsilon is larger than epsilon itself which justify uh, this, uh, these assumptions which we did uh, uh, to begin with out, out of the blue. And uh, with these assumptions, what you find is that your green function as function of energy behave like one over square root of epsilon, and that, that's, that's the sort of first basic fact about the model. Uh, that at, at certain energy scales, your, your green function behaves not as a Fermi liquid one, but in a, in, in a completely different fashion, right? So now I will start sort of from here and, and, and go on, but, but first let me see if there are any questions or suggestions. No, right. So, so, so first of all, uh, already on this level, you, you can start playing games, and you can uh, invent slightly more complicated models, and using this, these very facts, uh, obtain some uh, not completely trivial results. So, so one example which I like sort of most is, is given here. So this is um, 
uh, a paper from a year ago. Uh, I don't know. I took it from an archive. Um, uh, but it's probably published already uh, by Leon Balance and, and his uh, collaborators. So what they did, they, they took this SYK model, but now they put it in a, a d-dimensional array of, of dots. So you imagine that you have an array of dots, and each dot is represented by, by this SYK model. Okay? So on each dot, you have precisely what, I, what, what we, we have been discussing here. They use complex fermions because they, they want particle conservation to discuss electron transport. Uh, and then what, what they add is a hopping from one dot X and X prime labels, label dots. Okay. So they add a weak hopping, so T is supposed to be also random and in some sense small. Uh, and then what we, we discuss, let's say, electrical conductivity of such a rate. And what they find is that in a very wide range of temperatures, uh, electrical resistivity be behave like temperature, which sort of you can start speculating that it looks very uh, suspiciously similar to high TC superconductivity and other uh, uh, strongly correlated materials. Now, all what goes into this result is, is essentially this green function, nothing else. So essentially all what they do, they calculate uh, conductivity uh, which is given by Kubo formula. So there is this diagram. In each vertex of this diagram, you have, you have your hopping T, if you, if you wish, this is a velocity of your electrons. Uh, and then you substitute two green functions from, from here, uh, from here, rather. Uh, and you have to be careful about which one retarded, advanced, Keldish, so standard technology, not, not, basically uh, everything is completely standard, and you got that conductivity behave like um, one over temperature, uh, and frequency independent, and, and behave like one over temperature. From here, you, you immediately conclude that resistivity behaves like, like temperature. And, and since, since then, many other people played these games and uh, slightly different versions of the model, but it's, it's usually everything rotates around this, uh, uh, this observation. Okay? No, right. So now I want to go slightly farther than that uh, and, and te uh, basically tell you that uh, this is an, a good answer, but it's, it's only good in a, in a certain range of, of, of energies. And you have to be careful about n to infinity limit versus temperature versus energy. And uh, so there are, there are ma many more subtleties. Now, if you just calculate this green function numerically, like, yes, so that's a numerical calculation. It's, it's quite easy. So once you have your Hamiltonian, written as a uh, big matrix 2 to the power n over 2 times 2 to the power n over 2. You can numerically diagonalize it. I think this is done for n equal 34. Uh, and then you can calculate your green function uh, of time. That will be sum of all eigen, uh, eigenstates, many body eigenstates of your Hamiltonian, ground state, uh, chi i uh, n square e to the minus e n tau, right? So that's a Lehman representation for, for your green function in terms of exact uh, eigenstates and exact energies of your model. So that's, that's not a very difficult calculation. So what, what, what you see is green function is function of time uh, and what you see that if time is not very long, it, it approaches this black asymptotic line. It's a logarithmic plot. Uh, and the slope of this black line is, is precisely minus one half. So what, what we find is, is, is uh, this result. 
right? But now if time is, is, is a little bit longer, and you see that the characteristic time is of order 10, maybe 20, um, and I will argue that it's of order of n, actually, uh, then the slope changes, and it approaches a, a, a quite different slope, which I will argue is, is, is actually 3 half, and not 1 half. Okay. So the low energy physics, long time physics of the model is, uh, is also very interesting, but it's quite different from, from the naive uh, mean field uh, classical prediction. Okay. So uh, that's the first thing which I want to, to, to tell you. And then if, if time permits, I will try to tell you a few things about out of time order correlation functions which people discuss, like to discuss in, in, in the context of this model, which are signatures of quantum chaos. Um, and, uh, and maybe I, I'll tell you a few words about black holes, but I, I don't know too much about it. Um, any questions? Well, it, it, will, um, it will have uh, this t characteristic value of this t, of course, square, uh, divided by temperature, so pre pretty much that's it. It doesn't know about interactions. It only knows about hopping and temperature. Good question. Uh, anything else? No, right. So, so to understand this uh, low energy behavior, what, what I already started to explain you uh, last time is that we need to appreciate that this solution is, is, is not unique. And there is a whole family of low energy, uh, of classical solutions, uh, which have almost the same action. And this idea goes by, by the name of uh, reparameterization invariance. And that uh, uh, stems from the observation that is, if instead of this green function, you will write it in a way um, um, f of tau to the power one quarter time, no, f prime. So basically, if we go from tau to, to some other function, f of tau, so tau goes from 0 to beta, and f of tau uh, simplicity, we can, we can think about something like this. Um, so if, if, if instead of thinking that time runs uniformly, uh, ticking uh, like a clock, we, we change the pace of time and we call it f of tau. And we try our green function in the form of, of this and corresponding uh, n that's for, for self energy. We find that it still uh, is a, an exact solution of these two equations. Again, assuming that this guy is, uh, uh, is zero. And that tells you that, that there is a, uh, out of all these degrees of freedom, which are encoded in two matrices, and there are very many of them, there is a particular set of the degrees of freedom, which is parameterized by these functions f of tau, which forms a sort of 
low energy uh, manifold uh, of, degrees, of relevant degrees of freedom. Right? You, may, you may, of course, uh, worry that that's not the only one, and you can look for others, and uh, there is no theorem that, that there are no others, so maybe you, you, you'll invent something. But so far, nobody come with, with anything uh, but, but, but this. Uh, but this story. By the way, uh, you can also worry about replica structure of this theory for those of you who, who like replicas. So there are actually A, B, and so far we are working on uh, in, in replica diagonal sector. Um, so you can you can ask question: What, what if I have a replica of diagonal, or maybe replica symmetry breaking, and some exotic things like that? And indeed, some people discuss it. My personal view is that in this very model, there is no any replica symmetry breaking. And I even have some numerical evidence for this. Um, but if you make this, you change this model slightly, you deform it, then uh, most probably you, you will start having some issues with, with replica symmetry breaking. So, Life may be much more interesting than uh, what I'm telling you now, but uh, I can only tell you <laughs> that much in, in, in two classes. So let, let, let's, let's proceed with, uh, with replica diagonal and, and with this set of the degrees of freedom. So as we uh, argued last time, the actual manifold uh, of these degrees of freedom is a diffeomorphism of unit circle on itself slash SL2R, which, uh, which actually states that a group of Möbius transformation uh, leaves these green functions completely invariant. Okay. All right. So, so the next step is to say, okay, we want to uh, uh, we want to calculate our green function. Um, let's say I want to calculate the green function, g of tau. So I will uh, perform the, 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 this averaging. Uh, but instead of integrating over all possible matrices g and sigma, I will only integrate over matrices which are parameterized by, by, by the set of functions f. Okay? So, so then uh, 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 I need to substitute these guys into my, into my action and calculate what's the action in terms of um, reparameterization function f. Okay? Uh, now, what we already said, that the moment you uh, put d tau to be zero, the action is not. It's a, it's a uh, solution of the saddle point uh, equations, so I change f, and the action doesn't change. It's a completely zero mode uh, of my action, provided I, I forget about this d tau. Right? So therefore, I, I have to keep this d tau, so I have to recall what, what, what's my action. So uh, S, if you remember, was trace logarithm of d tau minus sigma, and then I had something like sigma g, and then I have something like g square g to the power 4. So I, I, I need to, to recall about this. Uh, but I will think that this is small because uh, I want to be at small energies. So I will expand in powers of, of d tau. So you will get something like trace of uh, d tau g, d tau g plus one half. In, in the second order perturbation theory and then uh, something beyond it. Uh, so this is the most interesting term. You can, you can easily calculate it. So it's, uh, in principle, it's non-local. It has two green functions, and it's parameterized by this 
uh, function f. So I, I just use this green function in, 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 into here. Uh, so it will, it will give me some no, non-local functional, which I don't want to uh, uh, bother you uh, with. Uh, if you uh, if you somehow, yeah, what, what should I say? Um, yes, so if you think what this bubble is, it will have a form of omega square log omega, and you, you see that it's non-analytic function, so in time space it's, it's going to be non-local. But if you're brave and you say that logarithm is probably not a, a function, I will somehow uh, introduce some regularization of my logarithm, then omega square is already analytic function, so, so the thing bec become local in time, and then what you find is that your action looks like, under this assumption, you find that your action looks like integral from zero to that, a d tau, and then there is a funny construction I want to tell you a little bit more about it. So you have a second derivative of your reparameterization function divided by the first derivative, uh, and everything is square, right? So uh, luckily, this business was picked up by people who do black holes, and for people who do black holes, apparently this is uh, bread and butter thing, and they know it as a Schwarzen derivative. So there is a there is a construction in complex al complex analysis which is called Schwarzen uh, derivative or Schwarzen. So notation is uh, S. F of complex number Z, and this thing is F double prime over F prime of Z prime minus one half F double prime F prime square. Another notation for this thing is F Z Uh, can you see it? Okay, so, so this Schwartz is actually Hermann Schwartz. It's not Isaac Schwartz, which uh, you may read books in, in, on string theories. So this, this Schwartz was living in the end of 19th century in, in, in Germany. So, uh, so what is interesting about this object for the complex analysis, it's double prime, um, is that uh, if F is a Möbius transformation, if F belong to this uh, subgroup, then uh, this thing is exactly zero. So it, 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 it basically measures how much your function F deviates from Möbius transformation. Okay. Uh, so what, what you observe is basically up to the full derivative, which in our, uh, in our context is of, of, of very little interest, uh, the action which measures the, the cost uh, of a given reparameterization is exactly uh, given by this uh, Schwarzschild derivative. So it, it will be proportional to integral from zero to beta d tau f z. Okay. Uh, so, so the way high, high string people arrive to this, they basically say that let's take the simplest possible object which is invariant uh, under this uh, uh, Coset space um, um, sub group of transformations. It's not a group. Um, 
Now, uh, as, as I am trying to, 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 to tell you here, that you can indeed derive it, but in the process of derivation, you, you commit a little bit of a crime because you, you uh, substitute non-local kernel by, by a local kernel. Yes? Sure, yes. So that, that, that's the simplest one, right? Like. Um, that, that's a good question. I, I think no, and you, you will sort of see, see why in a sec. But it's a, it's a usual logic that you take, you know, the most relevant from a renormalization group point of view invariant object, and higher power of it are probably irrelevant, and they are I irrelevant. But that's, that's, of course, a valid concern. Um, all right? No, OK. Uh, so let me uh, go on. Yes. Well, the honest answer is that I don't know. Uh, I have some thoughts about it, but we can talk, but uh, it will take me too, too far away. Uh, yes, but, but by the way, uh, that's precisely the moment uh, when uh, black hole people start to be interested, because black holes in two dimensions are known to be uh, characterized by two-dimensional gravity is known to be reducible to one scalar function, which you can call f. And the action for this fun function is known to be, to be precisely this. So in some sense, this is uh, already for people who, who are in the business, and I am not. But for people who are in the business, they, that's, that's immediately ring a bell that, that should be related to two-dimensional gravity. Uh, again, I, I may tell you a little bit more, but not sure. Um, no, okay, so now th this thing look mysterious, but I I in fact it's actually very simple. So what you notice that your function f better be monotonic, um, because otherwise uh, our time will go back and forth, that, that's probably not good. So if, if this is a monotonic function, then what we understand is that f prime is larger than zero. And since it's larger than zero, let me just say that f prime of tau is e to the some other function. I can always do it. Okay. Now in terms of this phi, uh, the action appears to be completely non-mysterious, non it's just phi dot of tau square. So the simplest possible, uh, the simplest possible uh, thing you can imagine. Okay, uh, so that's uh, observation number one. Observation number two is that uh, to, to, to perform our calculation, I need uh, an effective measure in terms of my reparameterization functions phi. And this measure is nothing else but har invari invariant measure uh, on, on, on this manifold. And that's a small exercise in, in mathematical physics to, to derive invariant measure. I will not do it. If somebody is interested, I can, I can explain privately. Uh, but, but the bottom line is that in terms of this function phi, 
the measure appears to be just flat. It looks, again, mysterious and complicated in, in terms of f, but in terms of phi, it's, it's just a flat measure. Okay. So therefore, all what I, I end up with uh, in calculation of my green function, I will continue it to here. Uh, it is an in integral over d phi with an action which is phi dot square d tau. There is a certain coefficient, let me call it m over 2, and this m is proportional to capital N because everything is proportional to capital N. And then there are, there are some factors which I don't want to, to bother myself. And, and, and finally, there is this uh, green function. Now, green function, I know what it is. It, it's, it's written here. Now, f prime is a good thing. It's e to the phi. So what I'm now calculating is e to the one quarter of phi of tau times e, one quarter, I'm sorry, one quarter of phi of tau prime. And, and the last unpleasant thing is, is, is this denominator. Now, denominator, look, it's f of tau minus f of tau prime. So you can notice immediately that f of tau minus f of tau prime is just an integral from tau up to tau prime of e to the phi of tau the tau, right? Since e to the phi is f prime, I integrate f prime and uh, I get I get this, right? So so what is sitting in my denominator is is this integral over tau to tau prime e to the phi of tau the tau to the power one half. So it's uh, it's almost a manageable exercise in, in functional integration, but, but this denominator still looks, uh, looks a bit ugly. Uh, fortunately, there is a trick due to Feynman which allows me to, to take denominator and put it in the exponent. And the trick, uh, do I have it here? Yes. So if I have one over x to the power p, then what you know is that this is one over gamma function, integral from zero to infinity, d alpha e to the minus alpha x alpha to the power p minus one. So, uh, almost trivial thing. So with, with, with help, uh, what, what I'm finding is that I have uh, this auxiliary integral over d alpha, one over gamma function, one half, whatever it is, um, square root of alpha. And then there is my functional integral, e to the uh, m over two phi dot square. Uh, from zero to beta g tau, then minus alpha uh, integral over t to t prime e to the phi g tau, and finally phi over four tau and phi over four tau prime. Okay, that that's already. Uh, completely familiar thing. Now, look, look, look what I get. Uh, I get a Feynman path integral for a quantum mechanics of uh, where the coordinate is called phi. Okay? And this is a quantum, this is a kinetic energy, like x dot square. And uh, this is a quantum mechanics in a potential, which is exponential in my coordinate. Okay? Now, there is a slight caveat here is that this potential is switched on at time tau and switched off at time tau prime. So it exists only finite uh, amount of time and then it's, it's, it's not there before and after. And what I need to calculate is a correlation function of this 
exponent with this uh, coefficient one quarter of my coordinate at, at two moments of time. And these two moments are exactly the moments where my potential is switched on and off. Right? So, um, Um, so what we got now is that I have this coordinate phi, and I'm thinking about quantum mechanics in a potential which is given by alpha e to the uh, phi, right? So uh, we, we actually know uh, pretty much everything about this quantum mechanics. It even has a special name. It's called uh, quantum Liouvillean quantum mecha mechanics. Li uh, uh, I'm not sure about my spelling, <laughs> but sorry for that. Uh, so uh, after uh, French. Uh, mathematicians Liouville, uh, and it, again, this quantum mechanics, or this field theory with, uh, with this potential has a lot to do with two-dimensional gravity. So what, what people realized back in the 80s is that two-dimensional gravity is very much given by, by field theory of, the, of that type. Again, that's sort of not completely surprising since I told you already that they realized that's given by Schwarzen. Um, but uh, for condensed matter people, we don't have to know about it. We, we, we just can solve it uh, brute force exactly. So you understand that if you have quantum mechanics with this potential, it has a continuous spectrum uh, which is uh, labeled by momentum at infinity. At infinity, you just have a scattering wave. It's, it's a free thing, e to the i k phi and e to the minus i k phi uh, plane waves go going back, back and forth. So energy is labeled by this k, and it's simply k squared over 2m. So that just kinetic energy. And all what we uh, need to do is, is to find wave functions. Um, so let, let me see. Yes. Um, the wave function psi, which is labeled by uh, quantum number k, it depend on depends on coordinate phi, and it's given by some modified Basel function k. Uh, of square root of m to the phi over 2. Never mind. So you, you, basically, corresponding Schrodinger equation can be transformed to a Bessel equation, and you, you know how to solve it. That, that's already technicalities. So, so finally, uh, my, my green function, which I will uh, write down, here is um, um, will be given by the integral over all uh, quantum numbers, so sum over all quantum numbers, uh, then I will need 0 e to phi over 4 k matrix element and e to the minus e k tau. Okay, so that that all you can do because you, you, you know pretty much everything. So let me just write uh, one next step because it will uh, allow me to discuss uh, one more thing. So after you calculate this, this matrix elements, you find that this is uh, dk k uh,
done. Um, so so you, know, you, you know all this, so what, what, never mind, but what, what is important is that you find that for relatively short times, um, time less than uh, capital N, uh, and capital N appears in this effective mass, uh, you, you, you have one over square root of time, and that's already a result which we, we discussed uh, long ago. But at longer times, which is uh, larger than n, uh, this integral uh, tau demonstrate completely different behavior, and it behaves like one over t to the three half. So on, on time scales, um, which is longer than number of particles, uh, the, the, the physics is, is actually quite different. And instead of going like one over square root of tau, it go like uh, tau to the three half. Uh, by the same token, what, what, what you actually observe here is, is exact result for many body density of states. So if instead of K, you use energy, where is my energy here? Uh, you can write it as d energy times density of states, many body density of states, and this many body density of states is simply given by uh, uh, n. So I I will explain it uh, in in a sec. Um, so uh, what this Again, never mind technicalities, but what this uh, simple uh, integration of reparameterization re invariance t tell you uh, is that your green functions are different uh, and your density of states, many body density of states has a particular shape. So let me first mention what, what the green function is about. So if you do uh, go to energy representation, um, Uh, so this one is already familiar, one over square root of epsilon. So this one, you do Fourier transform, and it goes like square root of epsilon. So our non-Fermi liquid uh, actually become quite different. So instead of uh, one over square root of epsilon, which was used by this paper, which I just uh, showed you, uh, you find that at the scale j over capital N, uh, behavior changes and go like square root of epsilon. Okay. Um, so that, that, that one remarkable fact, another one is here. So let me maybe show you the graphs which I already showed you last time. Um, Yes, so we, this is a many body density of states. So what we discover here is that behavior at, at small energy, uh, at very small energy, it goes like square root. So it's a Wigner Dyson kind of singularity. But at larger energy, it, it, it grows exponentially. And what is sitting in the exponent is square root of energy. So if, if we would have bigger, oops. No. Probably it's, it's better to, to look here for, for larger capital N. So it grows exponentially here with exponent of square root of energy, and that's known as a beta formula. Basically, uh, in any fermionic system, you expect that many body density of states increase exponentially with, with square root of energy. Uh, so that's uh, good news. At least it's consistent with, with the general principles. Um, now, how much time do I have? Half an hour. Very good. Um, no, all right. So, yeah, I probably need to stop here for, for, for questions. Yes?
Well, I would call them inspirational as opposed to analytical. I don't know any, you know, hardcore procedure which allow you to go from one to another. But you're completely right. There are, you know, they are jumping on you. So, um, right. So, so my, my initial motivation when I started to, 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 to learn about it was to, to, to see if these gravity methods can teach us solve condensed matter problems. And in some sense, I, I, I personally failed in this, in, in this pursuit. But, but apparently, uh, the flow of information may be going cover way around. So now people in, in gravity think that this is a, maybe a good model for a black hole. So they, they have this Hawking paradox of, of information and uh, what, what happens with, with information falling into the black hole uh, and what are microscopic degrees of freedom. So uh, the thinking is that this uh, very simple model, completely random fermions, uh, may be a model of, of a black hole. Okay. Now, what, what exactly goes into it uh, I can tell you a little bit more, but, but not much more. No, no, uh, look, be careful. So, so this thing precisely coming uh, from the time derivative. So if you, if you completely ignore time derivative here, then the action is zero, it, it's completely flat. Yes. Well, okay, good, good. So let, let, let me try to, to, to say it in, in, in a slightly different way. Um, so there is this symmetry which I already erased. Now our mean field solution, uh, classical solution, breaks this symmetry out of all possible expression, it, it chooses one in, uh, which is this, right? So this is a, if you wish, a spontaneous symmetry breaking, okay? Now, since you have spontaneous symmetry breaking, you have Goldston manifold, and this diffeomorphism of S1 divided by slash SL2R uh, is, a, uh, is a Goldston manifold, okay? So now you have to, be, be careful and you have to think whether Goldstone fluctuations restore the symmetry or, or, or does not, okay? Now, time derivative d tau plays a role of sort of magnetic field, okay? So if, 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 if d tau is big, if, if energy is big, uh, then uh, the symmetry is not restored, and uh, you have this solution. Okay. But if you go to smaller and smaller energy, that's like going to smaller and smaller magnetic field, Goldstone fluctuations become more and more important, and eventually they, they restore the symmetry. So this um, green function going to zero uh, at, at very small energy, if you wish, is a, is a restoration of symmetry due to Goldston, Goldston mode. So that's, that's the physics. Okay. All right. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit more about another interesting object which people like to discuss in, in the context of SYK, and it goes by the name of out-of-time order correlation function. Uh, 
Um, out of time order creation function functions uh, or yeah question so, so the idea is that uh, you want to calculate the correlation functions um, C of T, in, uh, which is many body trace or expectation value of uh, thing like this, uh, X of zero, Y of T, X of zero, Y of T, where X and Y are, are some, some operators. So uh, that's not what we usually do. Uh, usually we, we, we have some, some operator at time t and some other operator maybe O1, O2 at time t, t, t2. We do like this and t may be larger, t1 may be larger than t2 or t2 may be larger than t1, but, but that's what, what we calculate. Here we want to specifically calculate it one time another time back to, to the first time and then back to, to the second time, okay? So you can invent more complicated uh, arrangements, um, but, but that's, the, that's the simplest one. Now, I have no idea how to measure it and you probably need a time machine to, to actually measure it, but you can compute it numerically. Uh, now, why worry about it? Um, so, so the motivation came, uh, at least what, what, what is quoted, uh, from uh, Larkin and Avchinnikov in 67. Uh, um, back in, uh, long ago, they, 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 they thought about uh, quantum chaos uh, in the context of superconductivity, but ne never mind. So, so what we uh, thought about is uh, how chaos, classical chaos manifests itself in, 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 in quantum mechanics. And then it, it led to, to lots of uh, studies. Um, so the, as a X and Y, we basically thought about momentum and, and coordinate. So you may think about, um, let's say, X, um, uh, so let me call it P, momentum. So then what, what up to dumb constant, what you study is X uh, of zero, P of T, uh, uh, commutator and Square and expectation value. Okay. Now, why is it? Or let me actually change notation. I will think about x of t and p of zero. That doesn't matter. Now, why why this may be of interest? Look, in in a classical limit, um, commutator is probably going to a Poisson bracket, right? So, in a classical so context that that subject is Poisson bracket of X and P. Uh, square. So this one will be, uh, so it's easy to calculate Poisson bracket according to textbook rule. So this will be uh, DX of T over dx of zero square and in some sense average. Now if you have a quantum chaos, uh, then you have a sort of idea that 
trajectories which start, so x of zero, so this is x, this is time. So if uh, x of zero was very small, then with the time, uh, these trajectories are uh, going to, to deviate from each other, uh, probably exponential. So this thing will go like plus lambda t, where lambda is in uh, Laponov exponent. So if, if, if the system is chaotic, you probably expect, yeah, and I forgot uh, in this transition, I, uh, I'll have plan constant squares. So you will have h bar square uh, e to the 2 lambda t. Again, provided the, 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 the classic, corresponding classical system is chaotic. So if you find that uh, this um, expectation value of this commutator behave exponential with time, then you can, in some sense, regard it as a signature of a classical chaos going on in your quantum system. Okay. So, uh, so the expectation values like this are sort of indicative of, uh, well, maybe indicative of, of the chaotic behavior. That's uh, statement number one. Uh, statement number two is a theorem, uh, or they present it as a theorem, proven by Maldacena and Stanford in uh, 2015, I believe. So the, what they say is that if you have this out of time order correlation function, uh, it may behave as e to the uh, lambda t, or two lambda t. And what they prove is that in any, supposedly prove, that in any quantum system, this lambda should be less or equal than uh, pi times temperature. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I'll come to this in a sec. Uh, question? Yes. Well, look, so far I'm not telling you anything about SYK model, although I will in a sec. Uh, I'm trying to, 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 to talk generalities, so hold your question for a few minutes. Yes, Jane. Well, that's... That, that, that's a very good question. I mean, uh, yes, uh, 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 so what, what, what Jenny is asking is why temperature? I mean, what is temperature? Because the way I present it is here as a Lyapunov exponent. That's a certain characteristic of a classical motion, of classical dynamics, that, that's not related to temperature, seemingly, right? Uh, now, and, uh, and that, that, that's a very good uh, question to which I don't have actually a good answer. Now, formally, what we have proven, that, that proving that uh, this trace is a thermal trace. Now, that's also not, not, not so trivial because for normal people like, like doing condensed matter, thermal trace will be like this. By some reason, high energy people don't like this, and they prefer to, uh, to say that this is divided by four, and there is beta h over four here, and 
beta h over 4 here and beta h over 4 here. It's, so strictly speaking, this theorem is proven for this crazy object where you take a, a density matrix and you split it into four pieces and you stick it between your observables. Okay. Which, if you think about, it's, it's, it's not an, uh, uh, um, it's not an innocent procedure. Because look, imagine that you have a very small temperature, let's say zero temperature. Then what it tells you that uh, initial and final state should be ground state. But intermediate states here, if I introduce, you know, resolution of unity, maybe, maybe any excited state, right? So as a virtual process, I can probe any excited state. If I stick this beta H in the middle, uh, and let's say again temperature is zero, that will uh, limit all intermediate states to, to be also ground state though close to the ground state, okay? So if you, if you have this uh, slightly crazy definition, or maybe not even slightly, um, then at zero temperature, it, it, it basically does not evolve at all. So the entire evolution of this particular object uh, is, is due to the fact that you allow some temperature window. Okay? Uh, so, so precise relation between what we discuss and, uh, and what I sort of mentioned uh, in the beginning is, is, is not clear to me. Yes. No, no, but there, there is two here, so. No, it's, it, it looks like uh, smallest bosonic Matsubara. Are there any answers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so the, the, the statement is that no matter quant what quantum system you, 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 you take, lambda has to be smaller or equal. So those who, who saturate the bound where it is equal are supposedly very special and they supposedly have holographic dual. They can be described as a, a boundary of a certain d plus one dimensional gravity, okay? So that's conjecture. Uh, that's, and the, the, the thing about SYK model is that that's probably the, the simplest model, if not the only model, which does saturate this bound. That you can relatively easily prove using this technology which I, which I outlined a uh, few minutes ago. Okay. Now, uh, so since I was already asked how the, the different energy scales uh, show up, let me just tell you what it is for SYK model without any calculation. Um, so here you have to be slightly careful. Uh, you have to distinguish whether your temperature is uh, larger or smaller than the scale uh, J over capital M. Okay. So the interesting part from a black, po black hole point of view is, is high temperature. So they want temperature to be larger uh, the, than this, uh, this energy scale. So then this correlation function as function of time. Um, it starts from, from some constant. If you properly normalize it as one, and then it's exponentially deviating from, from one. So this is, this is this exponential behavior which goes like one over capital N, E 
1 minus 1 over capital N e to the power 2 pi temperature tau. So that proceeds up to time which you can call Ehrenfest time. which is uh, uh, one over temperature times logarithm of capital N. Uh, and then it changes to, to exponential decay, e to the minus pi Uh, and then at times which is larger than this uh, time proportional to capital N, which I told you about uh, uh, half an hour ago, it changes to power law, and then it then it go like one over, I think, tau to the power six. Uh, never mind. So signature of quantum chaos is, 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 is here in a, in a short time limit. Um, this quantum mechanics, which I mentioned, is, is in an opposite limit of, of long times. So that's this uh, Liouville uh, story. And there is an intermediate time between logarithm of n and, and n. Their behavior is, is yet different. But uh, again, supposedly, the fact that this exponent uh, saturate the bound is another uh, indication that there is a gravity dual model for, for SYK. Hmm? Well, it's, it's, what is growing is, is, is deviation from. Well, look, it's, it, it's, uh, it's a matter of whether you take a commutator here, and then you have this, this one at, at short time, right? So if time is zero, then a commutator is one. Um, um, yeah, so th 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 this one is, 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 is a boring thing. But, but deviation from one is, is supposedly what, what matters. Okay. Well, um, the good question. So possible answer that it's, it doesn't because it's unmeasurable f thing. Uh, there are statements in the literature that it measure, measures entanglement propagation, whatever it means. Which can't, be Which can't be measured either, right? But some people like to discuss entanglement and, and propagation of entanglement. So another popular word which come in, in, in this respect is a butterfly. So supposedly this thing me measures a butterfly effect, which is, you know, but some time ago butterfly, you know, the things of a butterfly did some perturbation and with the time going this perturbation multiplied exponentially and our universe is now is completely different. Um, so, uh, so you can uh, you can discuss this um, thing. So I, I'm so far in zero dimensional system, but you can discuss this object in a, in a finite dimensional system. And an interesting thing about it is that e even if you take completely you know disordered diffusive system, where heat, charge, and everything else propagate diffusively. Uh, with some diffusive coefficients, then this guy will propagate still ballistically with some non-trivial velocity called butterfly velocity, whatever it means. Uh, 
And supposedly, it tells you how, how quantum entanglement is destroyed or, or spread. Um, somehow, it measures outliers, the, 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 the fastest, the particles which manage to, to propagate without any scattering. So that, that, that's sort of condensed matter perspective, but uh, uh, string people l like it because they, they have this theorem of, of if it saturates, then apparently should be some gravitational. All right. Um, any more questions? Yes. Well, again, it's it, maybe nothing, right? So maybe it has no relation. But the, the, the hope is that uh, since we anyway don't, don't know how, what are degrees of freedom inside of the black holes, maybe uh, modeling them as a, as a fermions with, with random interaction does a, a, a great job. And, and some people really hope that, that it does and it, it can tell us something about physics of black holes. Um, but you, you better talk to somebody else about it. All right, I, I'll probably finish here and not go any further. So, yeah, sure. <laughs>